Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Brandon here, and today we're going to create a craft bucket server on our Mac computer. So this craft bucket server is going to allow you to download plugins and possibly create your own plugins and modify the game. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just going to do a basic installation right here. We're going to go to Safari, and uh, if you just search in Google Bucket, you'll get the bucket.org website, and you're not going to want to go to the bucket download. You want to go to craft bucket download where it says download bucket and craft bucket straight from the official source. So let's click on craft bucket. And this will take us to the downloads page with all the different builds. We're going to go to the most recent development build. And we'll just click on that. Here it says download. We'll just click on that. We'll download it. As you can see it's downloading up here in the up here in the window. Uh, it's going to take a while. So I'm going to stop it, clear it. I'm going to do it again. Sometimes if I do it twice it downloads faster the second time see there we go it went from four minutes to 10 15 seconds so basically once this is done we're just gonna drag it to our desktop just to save it there I'll clear this downloads and basically we're done with this page now we'll just go back to our search page where we found the the bucket.org page and we're gonna go to this link here it says setting up a server so this is how we set up a server. We're going to click on that. Now this is just some instructions on how to do this. Now we're going to scroll down to where it says Mac OS X. If I just click it, it'll take me right to it. Now this page here, you can follow these instructions and how to do it. It's pretty simple, but we're going to cover that in this video right now. So there's two things you're going to need, this code and this command. Okay, so before we use this code, we're going to have to right click on our desktop and we're going to create a new folder. And basically you call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it a craft bucket server. I'm going to save that. And once we name our folder, we can drag our jar file into that folder. So I'm going to double click on this to open it up so you can see it. There it is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to open up our text edit application and do a text edit. So we can type in this code here. So we're going to go to search and we're just going to type in text and text edit should come up. We're just going to open up that. Here's the window. Now we're going to go up to format and we're going to make plain text. So we're just going to get rid of all that junk. We don't need it. So if we go back to our web browser, we have this code. I'm just going to select it and copy and paste it. Command C, Command V. And we're just going to paste it into the text edit. I use Command plus to make the text bigger but you don't have to, I just do this so you guys can see it a little better. Now basically this here is a code that we're going to execute when we click on it. So this is what it's going to do, it's going to open up Java Craft Bucket Jar. Now this here is a allocated memory to the game. I'm going to change this to, let's see, eight. I'll give it 8 gigabytes. Basically I have 16 gigabytes of memory, so I give it 8. If you're unsure how much memory you have, go to your Apple icon go to about this Mac and you'll see right here it'll say memory it'll tell you how much so I give it 8 when I have 16 if you only have 4 give it 2 if you have 8 don't give it 8 give it like 4 you never want to go too high on this because your computer needs memory to run so you don't want to give too much to the server and take away from the main operating system so just a little word of caution there so basically once we do that we're gonna set that up to 8 gigs and here we have our craft bucket jar command well it's the name of the, the file it's gonna open so if we go to our server folder open it up we'll see that our name of our jar is different it doesn't match so we're gonna have to make these two the same names so what I'm gonna do here is just I'm gonna take out some of this text I'm gonna take out all these numbers and basically I'm just gonna copy that command C there we go and I'm gonna go over here and I'm just going to paste it, Command V. Now what I did was I renamed each to match each other so that when this executes the Java command it will open up the right uh, the right jar file. So basically it's 1.7.2 RO4. You could just do craftbucket.jar but I like to keep these numbers in here so you know what build you're running in case there's an update and you're not sure which version you had before you'll know this way. So basically once we have this code modified. We're going to save this file. We're going to hit Command S. 
and we're going to save it to our desktop and we're going to save it into the folder that we created. So it's craft bucket server and we're going to save this as a dot command file. So you can save it as anything you want. I'm going to call it start. That way I know it's going to start the server. And I just save it as dot command. So you could call it server.command, bucket.command, whatever you want. But basically the dot command is going to allow it to execute the code. So there it is, it's saved. I right click and I'll add a label. You don't have to do this, but I just do it to uh, make it stand out from the rest of the files and stuff that'll be in here. So once we're done this, we're done. We can just close text edit. We saved it, we, we colored it. Now we have to open up terminal before we do anything else. So we'll search it, type in terminal. Term should open it up here. Open up this terminal application. Now basically what we're gonna do is go back to our web page with the commands and this is what we're gonna do. chmod a plus x. We're gonna type that into our terminal. Make sure to hit a space after the x and what we'll do before we hit return is we're gonna go back to our server <clears throat> folder and we're gonna drag and drop our start.command file into the terminal and then hit return. As you can see, it should have just executed and returned a return line. There should be no errors. So this is done now. We can just exit terminal. What we did was we gave the start.command file permission to execute when it's, when it's clicked on. So now we can go ahead and double click start.command. It's gonna ask if we wanna open it. We're gonna say open. And you should get two windows that pop up. One says Java, this is our actual server generating. This one is just a bash. This is like a log file of all the server operations and things when, when you run your server. So as this thing is generating, you can see that it's already generated stuff in our folder that we made. Basically, a lot of the stuff here is what you're going to use to modify your server. You got your ops text. This is where you're going to put your Minecraft name so that you become an admin. So we'll go ahead, we'll do that now. We'll click on our ops, type in your uh, name of your Minecraft name. Command S to save it. Now we have to reload our server for this to take effect. So that's just a reminder, we'll reload that once it's done. So it's done, we're just gonna hit stop type in stop hit return let it log out and stop it's done always type in stop when you end your server never end it without typing that in because you could cause some errors in the system so now we're done we can exit terminal we go ahead and rerun it start dot command I'll double click two windows pop up the bash one we don't need this Java one should load faster since it already generated the world. And then once that's done, we've added ourselves as an op and then we are now an admin. So it's done. That was fast. So if we go back here, we go to ops, we'll double click again. There's our name. So now we're an admin. You'd add anybody's gamer name to that list if you want them to be admins. Permissions, that's something later we'll talk about, adding permission to the games and all that. Uh, the next thing we're going to go to is our server.properties. Double click that. I'm going to use command plus. And basically we're just going to look for our server port number right here. Write that down. This is the default uh, server port number, 25565. This is what we're going to add to the end of our public IP address so that people can join our game on our computer. So if you look here, you'll see a bunch of other things that are listed. You can change things here if you want. Um, you can change the game modes, the name of the game, and, you know, all kinds of things. But we don't really need to modify anything later. You can Google search this and learn about modifying everything. But it's basically self-explanatory. PVP true. If you don't want that to be true, just type in false, save it, stop your server, re restart your server, and it should take effect. Level seed. Type in the, you know, the seed number and all that, and you can uh, basically spawn a specific seed. So basically, we're done with this. We'll just exit that, close the text edit. And uh, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Google and type in what is my IP address, and we're going to get it from Google. 
So this is your public IP. This is what you're going to use to type in the game to connect to the server. And this is actually going to be part of the address that your friends get to type in to go to your server as well. So write down your public IP address. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the server. We're going to open up our Minecraft. We're going to let that load up. Once this loads up, we're just going to basically play the game like normal. Edit profile. We're going to play the latest version. Even though we downloaded the 172, it still works with the latest version. So I just do that. We'll go to play. Then you go to multiplayer. Now see, I already have mine set up. But when you, when you get to your page, it'll look like this. Nothing. You're going to have to add the server. Give it a name. Now for server address, you're going to type in the server address you got from Google. That is your public IP address. So move that over here, put that there. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my public IP. Next you'll do the colon sign and then you'll type in your port number. And that's it. This code here is going to be the address that you give to people to play your server. Now in order for them to play on your server, you have to have your server on and running. If you, if you stop the server, your game will go down. Okay, so here we'll go done, and there it is. Our server's up and running. Now I'll show you. I'll type in stop on the server console, and I'll close it. Hit return. It's done. If I go here, go back to multiplayer, cannot find the server because I stopped it. So we'll close terminal, and then I will go back to my craft bucket server, double click start, we can close the bash, we'll let this one go, I cancel, so once this loads it will be back online. Now that's all fine and dandy, you can play the game on your server but your friends can't play yet because you have to port forward that information, okay? So basically you see it's back online. So now we're going to do a little port forwarding here. And this is going to vary based on your router and, and uh, your computer and all that good stuff. But basically it's pretty general. So we're going to go to our start or our Apple icon here. We're going to go to system preferences. Once you get to the preference window, you're going to go to your network. You're going to double click that. And here you're going to see two addresses that you're going to need. The first one's your router IP. And the second one is the IP of the computer. This IP is the IP that your server is currently running on. This will be where they're going to connect to. Now, in order to port forward the router information, you'll have to um, connect to your router through this port and set it up. I'm just going to copy that there, Command C, go to Safari. Actually, I'll just go to a new new t tab here, and then uh, two tabs. Command V, and then I'm just going to go hit Return, and it's going to ask for my information. So this is where you're going to need your login information for your router. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Hit return. And now I can log into my wireless router. I have a Cisco router. So basically, if you don't have your router's information and it was never set up, so the password's never changed. You got a default username and password. If you just go to Google and type in how to port forward, oops. And if you look here, okay, how to port forward guide, you just click on the router you have, go through, it'll show you how to set it up. We'll close that, we don't want that. So the Airport Extreme, so, you know, it just shows you. So basically you just go through everything, it shows you how to do it, it'll give you the information, and uh, you should be good to go, basically. So moving on, we got our router here set up. And basically we're going to go to this applica Applications and Gaming tab. It's all set up nice, you just give it a name. It's for single port forwarding. 
and we're just going to port forward a single port. We're going to type in that port number here and here for the internal and external ports. The protocol is set to both and it's going to go to what IP address? This one right here. This is our IP address of the computer. We got that from our preference window. And wherever it says, oh there it is, right here. As you can see these numbers are the same except for the last two numbers. That's what specifies the computer out of the router. So once you set that all up, just enable, save setting, hit save, continue, successful. And that's it. I've successfully set up my port to allow people to connect to my server. So that's pretty much all right there. So basically I can go, I can join the server, it's going to generate the world. Once I get there it's going to do the terrain, there it goes. And I added myself as an op so I should be able to change the game mode. Oh, creative, game mode creative. And there we go. And that's pretty much it guys. So if you found this video uh, useful and it helped you make your server, make sure to give it a like. And uh, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. And uh, stay tuned, we'll have some more videos. We're going to go over some other things. So uh, check out the other links to the videos and uh, make sure to subscribe. Alright, thanks for watching everybody.